So uh, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, Vulcan and Telescope. Like, have you ever? I, I, yeah, I used Telescope early, and when I was learning Meteor, got your guys' stuff there. So that I'm familiar with the very earliest versions of it. Okay. Um, but I didn't follow through like cool. the Nova and and change that way. But uh, yeah, so that's my familiarity. Yeah. So basically, what happened is, yeah, we we went through several versions and uh, refactorings. So first from uh, Blaze to React, and then from uh, PubSub to Apollo. And along the way, we realized that, you know, the, the, the most exciting use case for Telescope wasn't so much just building like product and clones and so on, but more using it as a basis for building something completely different, like really customizing it. So, you know, the, the, the focus had changed over the years. So we decided to rebrand it as something completely new to really communicate that, you know, it's not just uh, you build your own Hacker News anymore, it's really build your own app. And um, I think it's especially relevant for uh, React and GraphQL and that whole ecosystem because they're like really great tools, but it's still pretty hard to build simple CRUD apps. Uh, mm -hmm. I've talked with a lot of developers, like Meteor developers, who still use Rails when, you know, a client just wants something done in, in a week and and they want to go as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's really a market there. Like there, there's a, a spot for a tool that lets you leverage all these really cool tools, React, GraphQL, Apollo, and so on. But at the same time, makes it possible to get something out the door really quickly. And that's basically what we're trying to build mm -hmm. uh, with Vulcan. Nice. So, so is, it, is it similar to... Because it reminds me that approach seems very similar to how like Meteor first came out when they first came out, how easy it was to get yeah. started and everything was kind of like that. Um, you could just build stuff right away. Um, and then as we had to advance some of the technology stuff, then it got more and more configurations and, and the, the beginner um, or people who just wanted to build something uh, didn't want to do that. So Yeah, exactly. I think I still really believe in the original Meteor vision of having something that just works out of the box. I, like... My interpretation of what happened is just that it would they, you know, they they took off more that they could chew. Like, yep. um, it's like it was just a really really tough problem to solve the front end plus the server plus the build tool plus the data yep. layer. But now that they're focusing on the data layer with Apollo and that other people, and also I mean the build tool with Meteor, but other people are doing yep. the the front end. Other people are doing, you know routing and so on now it's becoming more viable i think to build uh, that kind of tool yep and you know most people are building it for themselves internally uh so i figured why not you know kind of settle on a standard way of doing things and and the really cool part is because we have all these uh standard tools you can start off with that standard way of doing things but then uh, replace parts of it by your own custom uh, implementations uh, as you go along the way. So unlike Meteor, you're not boxed in into like a, a, a monolithic framework. It's more like we give you preset components that you can use or not use uh, as you like. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, so that, that's the, just the, the general philosophy and the general goals of the project. Um, maybe I can take you through a really quick demo of like the, the basic example that comes uh, in the the repo. So um, this is just a, a list of movies and it's pretty simple, but already there's a, a few cool features. So the first one being just uh, data loading. So there you, you have a, if you inspect the React components, so we have our movies list component here and you can see it gets a bunch of props. Uh, for example, it gets the results props filled in with the movies. And to get that, all you need to do is wrap this with uh, a special higher order component named with list uh, that Vulkan provides. So you don't need to write your own data loading logic. And similarly for uh, pagination, so you can load more movies. <laughs> and you also do that through... Um, uh, a prop, in this case, a load more function that's also passed by the same component. So in other words, you have your React component and you just wrap it with this with list 
uh, HOC, which will pass all the props you need to display data, paginate it, uh, display a loading indicator, and uh, basically all the, the stuff you usually need for that use case. Uh, so that's already pretty handy. Um, but something that's at least I found really uh, problematic when moving from Meteor to Apollo was uh, data updating after a mutation. So, I, I mean, I don't know how how much experience you have with Apollo already. Um, yeah, yeah, our team has a bunch of experience. I personally haven't, I've done some of the early kind of stuff examples, but I haven't done it like had a bunch of real use cases because my roles shifted a little bit from day-to-day -day development, but yeah. yeah. So basically in Meteor, when you insert a new item in a collection, it will just appear, uh, you know, magically yep. basically. But in Apollo, um, when Apollo inserts, like runs a mutation and gets the new data back from the server, Apollo itself doesn't actually know what to do with that data. Uh, it doesn't know where to insert it, which query to update. So you have to tell it uh, what to do manually. And that can be pretty, um, you know, it's a little bit of work, especially if you mm -hmm. have to do it for every single mutation or every single uh, list of documents in your app. So that's also something we take care of for you. So for example, um, if uh, if I insert, insert a new movie here, I don't know the year, but okay, it will appear instantly. And that's uh, just taken care of for you. So you don't have to write that data updating logic. Uh, it will just work. And um, you know, similarly with things like editing. So um, Apollo does have a, a feature that automatically propagates updates. So that's really cool. But what it won't do is um, take care of reordering uh, a list. So for example, uh, it's not the case here, but supposing that this list were uh, sorted by year, and you change the year, out of the box, Apollo wouldn't know uh, how to reorder things because the, the sort would usually happen at the uh, UI level, maybe in your React component. Um, so you have to implement it manually somewhere. Uh, but here, what we can do is uh, we can actually uh, reuse the same uh, Mongo object um, used to query for the data and sort it on the server, we can reuse that on the client to also sort the list for you. So in a way, it's pretty similar to mini Mongo, except that whereas uh, Meteor had this um, uh, client-side mini Mongo cache of data, here we're only using the, the Mongo uh, uh, syntax, so the Mongo filtering, sorting syntax, mm -hmm. but we're still storing data in Redux with Apollo. So it's kind of a hybrid approach where we're still leveraging Apollo and using Redux and all the standard stuff, but we're trying to get close to the original media experience of having you know reactivity and things that can uh, just work. Um, and, and when you use it, it's pretty cool because you know you don't have to be all, always thinking about okay, how am I gonna update my data? How am I gonna sort my list? Um, mm -hmm. Which, which is kind of a pain. So, uh, by, by the way, let me know if you have any questions uh, so yeah, far. Yeah, no, this, this is good. I'm, I'm totally following you. Cool. So, really good. Uh, another thing uh, that we can do for you is um, actually uh, generate all these forms based on your schema. So in Meteor, uh, you know, we had auto form. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were originally using, but we ended up kind of implementing our own other form like thing. So, you know, whether it's the edit form or uh, insert document form, they're all generated from just a, a JSON schema. And um, the, uh, the form handling logic, so uh, validation and insertion in the database, that's also kind of hooked up together for you. So, you know, at the end of the day, when you build, like, at least in the, in the, the really early stages of building a new app, it's mostly lists of data and forms. Yep. So that can be a, a huge time saver having these, uh, these kind of primitives available to build up your app like that. Yeah. Um, so maybe I can show you how it actually works uh, in the code. 
Um, the, and the first thing I should mention is uh, we're using a package-based architecture. So you can see here that uh, all the, like the entire code base is split into packages, and basically it's like the entirety of the code base is in packages, which is pretty convenient because you can easily add or remove features. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what we were just looking at, the movies example, uh, only uses these four core packages. And then um, we have one uh, language package, the password uh, package, and then the actual uh, code for the example. But uh, all these other uh, packages are uh, disabled, they're commented out. And these are all kind of the the legacy features that we have yep. from telescopes, so posts, comments, uh, newsletter, and they generally all work together, but they're completely optional. So if, if, you're, uh, if your app kind of fits that mold of having posts, comments, and so on, you can use them. If not, you know, just use your uh, own custom collections and go from there. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the example movies package, um, yeah, before we look at the components, the, f the most important thing is actually the, the collection. And uh, we have this uh, create collection utility that kind of centralizes uh, everything together. And it, it's uh, a wrapper around the usual uh, uh, new Mongo collection. So as usual, you pass it the collection name, but you also pass it a GraphQL uh, type name, as well as your uh, JSON schema, and then a resolvers object and a mutations object. And based on, on this, based on passing it your uh, type name and schema, we can actually generate the GraphQL schema for you from the JSON schema. Got it. So the JSON schema uses a simple schema. And what's really cool about this approach is that you have like this single source of proof that's mm -hmm. used for everything else. So you're not going to get like uh, differences between your JSON schema and uh, GraphQL schema because, you know, you, you know, it all comes from the same place. And of, we also have um, utilities and patterns for when you do want a different schema, right? If you want more flexibility, you can also uh, basically just give your own schema and type it out manually. But at least in the beginning, it's pretty cool to have this uh, automatically generated GraphQL schema. Mm -hmm. And um, That's great. yeah, um, so you know we have the usual type uh, properties. That's what we use to populate the GraphQL schema. Uh, we also have like a, a permissions layer, whereas uh, you can. You know, you, you have this uh, viewable by, insertable by, editable mm -hmm. by properties, and you can fill in the name of the user groups that can do these actions. So in this case, you know, name is a public property, so it's viewable by basically everybody, but you could restrict it to um, logged in users, or um, maybe you want this property to only be editable by admins. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can even go further. You could have just uh, any any function here, um, and then you know uh, define your own custom logic. Mm -hmm. and, and what's cool about this approach as well is that uh, if we go back to the the forms here, since they're generated from the schema, we can uh, we're able to only show you the fields that you can actually edit right now based on your. Uh, user privileges, right? Got it. So uh, there's kind of this, the there's validation, there's permissions on the back end, but also on the front end, the same logic is used to generate the UI. So that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. It's really cool. And then the other two parts here are resolvers and mutations. Um, so resolvers is our uh, uh, GraphQL query resolvers. And you know what, what we realized working on Telescope and now Vulkan is that most of the time you need the same three resolvers. So one for document lists, one for a single document, and then a total resolver, which is used to figure out the total number of documents that match a query. 
um, and that's used for uh, pagination, for example. Mm -hmm. So you know that's how we we know that there's still more documents left on the server. And and so we have this um, this convention, right? That you're gonna pre provide these three resolvers, but we don't actually write them for you. You can still you know write your resolver as usual. So um, it, in meteor terms, this would be like a loading data via a method where you pass a set of arguments and you get data in return. You know, that's what we're doing here. We're getting our uh, Mongo selector and options and then querying the database and then returning the results. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, you, you we're querying Mongo here, but you could do whatever you want here. It's up to you. Yep. So you could query another database or a third party API. Uh, so the idea is, is not so much to, you know, give you everything um, working out of the box magically, but more give you these uh, these sets of uh, blank sl spots that you fill in with your own logic. So you're still in control, but at the same time, you don't have to take as many decisions as you okay. otherwise would. And then the, the mutations are very similar. So we also have three mutation resolvers, uh, new, edit, and remove. And again, uh, you can still uh, provide any content you want for the actual mutation. And then once we have all these things, uh, we can import them all into create collection. And based on this, we can uh, unlock uh, all the cool features that you have on the client. So for example, um, I was talking about data loading earlier, and that's how it works in practice. So you have your uh, movies list, uh, component here and you you just wrap it with um, with list mm -hmm. um, and provided a few options such as the collection you want to load data from uh, the name of a fragment that's going to control what data you query for in that collection and then optionally a, a limit if you want to li uh, only show five items at a time and based on just these three properties you know, we're able to load your data and paginate mm -hmm. it as well. Um, so, yeah, in the way it works, you know, behind the scenes, it's although there's a lot of uh, boilerplate code, the concept itself is pretty simple. It's just a regular query, but we leave out the query name, resolver names, fragment names, and, and then fill them in uh, dynamically. Mm -hmm based because we know you know b based on the fact that you filled in the resolvers you filled in the fragments and the mutations and so on so so yeah that's a really high level overview of like the the core features um which are probably the most useful um there's also a lot of other like secondary features like there's a server side rendering that's taken care of for you uh there's uh there's user accounts so, you know, you can uh, sign out, sign in. Um, that also just works. We have a, a package for that. Uh, there's uh, internationalization working out of the box with uh, React uh, I18N. So it's a pretty nice platform yeah. altogether, uh, I think. Obviously, I'm yeah. biased, but... <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's great. So what do you like? What, give, me, give me the... What are you hoping to do with it? What are you hoping to um, get out of it? Obviously, I think it's like I think it's great in terms of um, it. Kind of brings me back to the kind of meteor roots and helps yeah. get people back into programming, but still using the modern technologies, especially with React and Apollo and and that kind of stuff. So, like, I think I think in general, like, I'm totally following all all that kind of stuff and and the reasons for why it should exist. Um, but what's like kind of your goal with it? Um, is it to write another kind of book like Discover Media? Or is it to um, like what's the hope and stuff there? Give me a little context for that. Yeah, um, I guess right now the the main goal is just you know to keep building the community and keep building the project. Um, so I I use uh, Vulcan myself for uh, Sidebar, okay, uh, which is uh, my design newsletter. So I'm always like just maintaining it for that reason, if nothing else. Okay. Uh, but I think it has a lot more potential, obviously, and um, I think you know, lots of people are already using it. Um, 
for example, uh, uh, Xavier, my uh, the other core team member, he just built this site for um, for a company that helps you find um, drones. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, that's, that's fine. <laughs> that it's happens fine. sometimes. But yeah, basically you can. Um, so you have a map, and that's built with Vulkan. So instead of being a list of posts, uh, it's a map, and you can filter it, um, and so on. So I don't know if the site is really live right now, if it's working. But the idea is really that, yeah, people could build anything with this. And uh, I think it'd be really cool to see how far we can take it. So at this stage, I don't really have like a necessarily a big master plan of what I want to do. But it's just trying to get more developers on board. and you know, seeing where we yeah. can take it.